as Providence would have it, I don't think anybody who uh, arranged this thing yesterday knew this was the case, but we just watched an episode of The Chosen last night, which uh, encapsulated a lot of this, the, the whole story of the bronze serpent being raised in the desert and that. And even <clears throat> they, they, they put it across so well, you've got Moses <clears throat> fashioning this bronze serpent. <clears throat> Keep in mind, Israel was very prone to idolatry. They were very prone to adoring calves or things or whatever it may be. So for God to ask Moses to fashion a serpent, keep in mind, remember the pharaohs, all the, the traditional pharaoh headdress, even if you buy them in a, in a costume shop, they always have the serpent thing out the top there. So the serpent was, was a pagan symbol. It was a, a, an Egyptian symbol. This was not Christian, right? Or Jewish for them. Uh, uh, so to fashion a, a serpent, and then uh, see they're being bitten by serpents. They would have known the, the story of the fall, which came about because of a serpent. And now they're being asked to look upon a serpent in order to get better. You can see how it, it, it just, it all, it seems, it seems wrong. It doesn't seem to fit. It doesn't seem like the right answer. You know, surely we should raise um, some, some kind of a, a Jewish symbol. Uh, a lamb, right? Because they had just celebrated the Passover, or that the Passover had been inaugurated there a couple of years previously. Um, so maybe we should have some sort of a, a symbol like that, or a symbol to represent the Holy Land, or Star of David, or something, you know? I mean, uh, oh no, David came later. Uh, so a Jewish symbol, though, a, a Hebrew symbol, a, a symbol that would work for them. But to use, like, effectively what was a pagan symbol, it doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't seem to make sense. But if you look at scripture, scripture is full of things that don't make sense, right? Noah, can you build a big boat for me in a field? But Lord, that doesn't make sense, I know, trust me. Uh, so Moses, I'm gonna call you, by the way, there you have, there's a death sentence, you're, you're being hunted down because you just killed a man. So you're being hunted down, but I'm gonna send you to the guy who's hunting for you and you have to tell him, the most powerful man in the known world, to let all of his free labor go. Lord, that doesn't make sense. He's not, he's not going to listen to me. Trust me. So there's going to be a plague, um, and the angel of death is going to fly over your country. Okay? And if you get a lamb and slaughter it and put the blood over the, the doorposts, your family will be safe. But Lord, that doesn't, that doesn't, make, that doesn't make sense. Trust me. So then they flee, and they're fleeing right for a sea. We don't have a bridge, a boat, not even a paddle. What are we going to do when we get there? This doesn't make sense. Trust me, and you will see. We are dying of thirst out in this desert. Strike the rock, strike the rock. How hard do I have to hit it <laughs> like, to get water from it? I mean, that's going to be one heck of a hammer. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Trust me. How can this come about since I am a virgin, says Our Lady? I mean, I've, I've, I have given my life to you as a virgin, and I, I feel that's what I'm supposed to do, but I'm going to be a mom at the same time. I mean, I want to do your, your will, but I just, I'm not sure how, can I, how I can do both. It doesn't make sense. Trust me. Scripture is full of things that don't make sense, but they, they do something important. They don't make sense, but they make room. They don't make sense, but they make room for God to act. All right, that's, it's like, if everything was, was it's like uh, so, uh, various occasions when people of Israel wanted to defend themselves uh, from an invading force. Or we think of the story of Gideon, for example, in the Book of Judges, where there's a, a, a great, a, a much larger force coming against them. And God says to Gideon, you have too many soldiers. Too many. So they go from was it 20, 20 or 30,000, eventually whittled down to, to 300. Like, is that, that's, that's insane. You, Lord, you will ne you, you could, there's no way you can defeat the Midianites, like with a far superior force with 300 men. They'll circle you around, that's it. Like, if you're surrounded on all sides, you can't, you can't fight on all sides simultaneously, you just can't. The Lord says, yes, but see, if you win the victory because of your many soldiers, 
you will say, ha ha, we won a great victory for ourselves. But I want to show you that it is the God of Israel who will grant you the victory. So reduce your men to 300 and we won't go into the story. But it doesn't make sense. But it makes room for God to act. It doesn't make sense, but it makes room for God to act. So when we trust, it's, it, it, it's a very similar thing. Uh, we, we fast forward like to our day where uh, you receive a, a difficult diagnosis or you feel called to do something which might cost you something, but you wonder, is this, is this making any difference or is this making any sense at all? You know, say, for example, you have the inspiration to start a, a prayer group or a youth group or, or some, some initiative in, in a parish, and you really feel the Lord is calling you to do this. You know, he's placed it in your heart, and you think, I haven't got the resources, and I haven't studied theology, and uh, I don't have much money, and I'm old, I'm too old, I'm too young, or I'm too me, you know, too limited, okay? So it doesn't make sense. Good! <laughs> if it doesn't make sense, it's actually a good sign. Because if it doesn't make sense, it makes room. It makes room for God to act. And if God can act, then you'll see miracles. Like, you, every year uh, before last year, when New 2000 would put on uh, festivals and retreats, they would start off with about six euro in the bank and put on a festival that would cost the bones of 100,000 if they rented the large marquees, right? That doesn't make sense. You don't put on an event costing 100,000 euro if you've got six euro in the bank. You know, you just don't do that like. But the Lord would provide every year. Doesn't make sense, no, but it makes room for God to act. It makes room for God to show that he's father. So it's, it's fantastic, like. It's, even us here, like, when we started this, when we started Holy Family, we had an idea. We had no money, and we had no young people. We had an idea, that's all. Uh, how, how, even if, and even if we had the house, even if this house was given to us, even if it was ten times the size of a pool at the back, uh, we still wouldn't have young people. How do you get young people to do something like this in this day and age? I'm not sure if you've seen the movie. What's it called? If you build it, they will come. What's that movie called? Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams, yeah. It's really old. The older, the more experienced generation out there might remember. Kevin Costner, he builds this baseball field in a cornfield, baseball pitch. Triangle, whatever it's called, stadium, stadium, uh, in, in a cornfield. Long story, won't go into it. Uh, point being, what the Lord calls us to might not make sense, but it's actually a good sign. Because then we know that the fruit of it doesn't come from us. Because what was realized or what came about was this fruit of providence or chance, but not you, and that's good. Because then we will know in our heart of hearts, all the glory goes to God. So when we're called to things, things that seem beyond us, and even, like, to be honest, things maybe on, on a more uh, a level, on a more interior level, when we think of our struggles with maybe addiction or impurity or vanity or anger, or resentment, or whatever it may be, something like we're holding on to and don't want to let go of. You think, Lord, I actually can't do this. I can't. I, you, you, I know you're calling me to be forgiving and loving and so on and so forth, but I just can't do this. I can't. This doesn't make sense. And the Lord is saying to us, it may not make sense, no. But it makes room. It makes room for me to act. So Lord, let us give you that room, that space to act in our hearts. Lord, let us not get in the way of what you want to achieve in us and through us. Let our slow understanding and our limited ability not get in the way of what you want to realize. Help us to respond as Moses. Help us to respond as our Blessed Lady. Not my will, but yours be done. Amen. <laughs>